everybody. We're good? We're live? Yeah? Guys, how's it going? I'm Dan from Baked by Dan. Today, I'm still feeling summer and I'm making one of my favorite summer fruits, larger than life of course. I'm going to show you guys how I make a gigantic pineapple out of cake, fondant, wafer paper, all kinds of cool stuff. And before I get all the way to this right here, I have to start by carving some cake. So what I did was bake uh, four layers of chocolate butter cake, a nice sturdy firm cake filled it with some Swiss buttercream, and I chilled it like earlier this afternoon so that it'd be nice and solid. Because uh, I wanted to show you guys how I arrived at this pineapple shape. So what I'm doing is basically just rounding the top of the cake off using a serrated knife. And I'll just go little by little, turn this all around as I go. So if you guys have never uh, seen one of these live videos here before, I usually create amazing cakes that just wow you every Friday night. Uh, so make sure you check out my Facebook page, Baked by Dan, and also check me out on Instagram at Baked by Dan if you want to kind of get an idea of, you know, what I have going on for that week. And if you guys have any questions about baking or what I'm doing, uh, leave your questions in the comments below. Don't forget to share this post with a friend who might find a gigantic pineapple cake cool. Uh, every summer, I try and have like a luau themed barbecue with friends and family. So I'll definitely be creating a cake like this once that comes around. So what I did was, <laughs> I'm throwing cake here. What I did was just round out the top and now I'm just gonna start rounding in the bottom. And I'll just turn the cake as I do this. Pineapples do round in uh, a good bit at the bottom. You know, they sometimes they're, they're kind of wobbly um, and they don't always stand up straight, but for the sake of structure on this cake right here, I decided not to round the cake in too much, or carve the cake in too much, I should say. So once I have both pieces, or the top and the bottom, kind of really rounded together, what I like to do is just take clean hands and just kind of pack those crumbs in. And all that really does is get rid of any like really sharp edges from the carving process, and it also kind of pulls those loose crumbs in and makes the next step, which is crumb coating, a lot easier. So I think that kind of, you know, looks like a pineapple shape. A few more sides would, or a few more uh, angles on the side here would have to come in. And then of course, I would further refine the shape with buttercream. Once I buttercreamed the cake and chilled it. After I chilled the cake, once it had buttercream on it, I wrapped the whole thing in green fondant, which I did right here. So I wrapped a big piece of fondant around the cake, and then I started texturing it. And the texturing process for this pineapple takes a good bit. Um, it takes a good bit of time. So this one right here, I started yesterday. And to get it to the point where it was, like this, with the texturing and uh, dusting, took about two and a half, maybe three hours. Uh, but I purposely left a little bit of it undone so that I could show you guys all the steps that it takes to really get the pineapple texture. Um, I experimented with this cake for a few weeks. I've actually been wanting to, to make it for quite a while because I wanted to be able to make it as realistic as possible. I also have some leaves for my pineapple that I've made out of wafer paper and spaghetti. The spaghetti is sandwiched between the wafer paper and that allows me to stick the leaves into the cake and have it be completely food safe because obviously spaghetti is food, so it's food safe, right? <laughs> So the reason that I covered my cake with green fondant before applying my yellow is because I need something to stick all of these yellow pieces to, as opposed to just sticking them to buttercream. So I have my uh, yellow fondant here. I actually also put a couple of drops of lime green in this because pineapples, depending on their ripeness, definitely have some uh, green undertones to them. So I'll just give that a little knead. I'm gonna grab some cornstarch and a rolling pin. And I want to roll this out to about a quarter of an inch thick. Get rid of my crumbs here. So if you guys are just joining, this gigantic pineapple is actually all made out of cake and fondant. Um, so I'm taking you guys through the whole process to show you how I made the whole thing. I'm gonna finish it live here on the Food Network Facebook page. And if you guys haven't seen my videos before, my name is Dan Langan, and I'm from Baked by Dan. And you can check out my Facebook page, Baked by Dan. Uh, the link is right at the top of this video. So before I cut out each of these shapes, what I did was take a circle cutter, 
and I sacrificed it just for the purpose of this pineapple cake. And I kind of squeezed it in both directions until it turned into like a rounded diamond. And I'm going to place a piece of plastic wrap over top of my fondant before I cut out the pieces. And that's going to make all of these pieces rounded as opposed to having like a really sharp edge to them. So that when I place all of these next to each other, it mimics the texture of a real pineapple a little bit more. It kind of keeps them looking separated, even though they're actually sitting right next to each other. So I'll lift this up. It also makes it a lot easier to actually get the pieces uh, out of your cookie cutter. If, you're, if you've ever used a cutter and you've had the fondant stick to it really bad and you can't seem to get the piece out of the cutter, if you lay a piece of plastic wrap over top of your fondant first, you'll find that it's really easy to get the fondant out. So I'll just get rid of any cornstarch that's on the bottom because I want to make sure it sticks. And then what I have to do is kind of just like piece these together like a puzzle. And there's going to be gaps in between them. That's fine. That's exactly what I want. I'm going to fill those gaps in um, by kind of pinching all the pieces together when I get to texturing. And as I'm starting to get towards the top here, they're not all going to fit. So I'll just cut it a little bit smaller. So let's see, I need a few more here. So I counted and by my estimates, there should be about 100 of these individual pieces on this cake. So as I was planning this, I decided that I absolutely had to get it started ahead of time. Otherwise it would have been a really long process to try and show live. So my favorite part of this cake is actually all of the texturing that I got to do. Um, that's where I really had the opportunity to kind of take some artistic license and then once all of your texturing is done with the addition of some uh, powdered food coloring, all the texture really comes to life. So that's, that's kind of the best part. All right, so I need a smaller one. So I'll just take uh, a smaller cutter here. This is actually just a piping tip. Same thing, I just tried to squeeze it so it was like a rounded square almost. That just pops right out place that right there. And I need a few more of these small ones here. So I have my fondant, which like I said, I rolled out to about a quarter of an inch thick, and I'll probably need about five more. So guys, don't forget that if you uh, have any questions, I'll do my best to try and answer them when this broadcast is over. And um, you can also hit me up on my Facebook or my Instagram at Baked by Dan if you're curious what cake, uh, cake I'm creating, you know, before Friday comes around. You can check me out on either of those two social media spots and you'll uh, get the scoop before it happens. So like I said, I'm using uh, a chocolate cake recipe here. If you guys are looking for good cake recipes that sculpt really well, I have a blog and a YouTube channel. The name of that is bakingwithdan.com. So you can find my recipes there, the recipes I use almost every day. You got a good shot of this? Yeah? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> all right, so I don't need to go all the way to the top because I'm going to be adding leaves. Which you can see right there. I'm just gonna brush off any cornstarch, put my fondant away so I can use it for another project. And now comes the fun part. Gotta start texturing this. So I'm gonna take a tool, it looks like a little like clamshell or a little uh, spiky, spiked round spoon almost. And I'm just going to pull each of these, or pull this clamshell from the edge of each of these piles kind of towards the middle. And that's gonna begin the, uh, that really organic pineapple texture look. So sometimes with something like this, I would use modeling chocolate or I'd use half modeling chocolate and half fondant. But I, uh, I tried modeling chocolate and the fondant actually worked out a little bit better. So it's nice to know when you have a couple of mediums to work with, like there's gum paste, there's modeling chocolate, which holds shapes really well. And then there's fondant, which is great here because I can texture it, but it still keeps a nice soft kind of rounded look to it. Uh, so whenever I'm working on a cake project, if I'm unsure of which medium I want to use, I'll try out the technique before I put it on the cake with, you know, all of my options, and then I can kind of figure out what would be best. 
So now I have these like little gaps here that I mentioned. So what I want to do is just take a tool and kind of push the fondant into the gaps. And this is actually how pineapple pieces come together. Uh, when I create food cakes, I often look at a ton of photos or I actually just, uh, you know, get the food that, that I'm working with. So I, um, I just bought a pineapple and I just studied it really closely and looked at the texture and uh, it was really helpful in trying to get this to come together. So now I'm just taking this pointed tool here and I'm just going to drag the tool towards the center. And all of these textured lines will really show up, they'll really, you know, come into sight once I get to adding all of the, uh, the color dust to this. So I know that pineapples, once they're ripe, are pretty, you know, solid golden. Um, but since my leaves are, you know, really green, I want it to incorporate a good bit of green into the pineapple. So I definitely chose to go with, I guess, like a semi-ripe pineapple here. So once I feel like all of these are together, I want to make kind of like an upside down V, like a crosshatch pattern across all of these. Because what I want to do next is take a small pair of scissors that I use mostly for the center of sugar flowers. And I'm going to cut a slit down the center of each of these. And that's going to create that uh, signature spike that a pineapple has. I was always kind of afraid of pineapples when I was younger because I remember touching them in the grocery store and they were always like, you know, really pointy. Um, but now, like I said earlier, they're actually one of my favorite summer fruits. My favorite thing to do with pineapple is actually to grill it. Brush it with a little bit of oil once the grill is on, get some nice grill marks on it. Amazing. All right, so that's what it looks like once you texture it. And I'm gonna bring this to the edge of the table just so I can kind of get some leverage here. So what I'm gonna do is take my scissors with the tips pointing down and just make a cut. And that's going to separate nice and pointed and then I'll further point it with my fingers. Some of them I'll make a little pointier than others. Maybe I'll leave some sticking out. Some I'll kind of push back in or push to the side. So definitely a lot of steps to really get this detail. Uh, like I said, that's why I had to start this project yesterday. So I'll just go all the way around, get these points done, and then I'm gonna grab two colors of petal dust. Um, whenever I'm working on cakes, I always uh, really am mindful of the fact that the colors, the dusts and things that I'm using, or the food color pigments, have to be food safe. They obviously have to be edible. So I always find that it's a safe bet just to go with the uh, powdered food colorings that I can get from my arts and crafts store. Um, usually if they're in the cake decorating aisle, they are food safe, but you still always have to check the package. So just make sure if you're working on something like this that you know what you're using. And as always, I love seeing the photos, the pictures of the cakes that you guys create. So if you're baking any summer themed cakes, you're working on any maybe luau or tropical inspired desserts, feel free to share all those photos in the comments below. I know that every week I love checking them out. Everyone always gets pretty good feedback from everyone else that's watching. So feel free to share away. All right, so some of these that are sticking out really far, I'll kind of push back in. Make sure I don't have any major gaps. I'll go back in with my tool one more time. This is usually called a Dresden tool or a veining tool. It's a really basic, pretty all-purpose um, cake decorating tool. It's great for a lot of things. So if I had to put these tiles on, I'll call them, and then didn't get a chance to texture them all and then had to walk away, I find that usually when I put my fondant in the fridge, it kind of re-softens it when I bring it back to room temperature, and then I'm able to keep working on it. All right, so now on to the color dusting, the best part. So I have some brushes that I've already probably permanently dyed green with all of this food color. And what I'm gonna do is mix together a little bit of lime green and then a little bit of moss green. And I think that gives me a pretty good mix. I went pretty dark in some spots. So towards the top of the pineapple, I'm going to try and go a little bit lighter. Um, pineapples always have that 
you know, color variation to them anyway. So just loading the brush with a little bit of color from my paper towel here. And then I'm just gonna try and, let's try that again. I'm just gonna try and hit just the centers, or not the centers, the, uh, the edges where all of the pieces kind of meet together. So I'm actually gonna use a smaller brush here. So I'll dust that all towards the center, and that's going to bring all of those textured lines and all those grooves kind of to life. It makes them a little more visible. So I like to do coloring like this in steps or different shades. Um, so instead of making it really dark from the get-go, um, I'll go a little bit lighter, and then maybe I'll go back in with a darker green in some spots. And I even um, painted part of this pineapple with a little bit of ivory food gel, um, or, or food coloring gel, um, just to add some, you know, some more life to it. Because I noticed on the real pineapple that I had gotten that there are always like brown spots on the pineapple. And you know, I want it to look as realistic as possible. So if you guys are just joining, we're uh, working on this big tropical pineapple made out of cake, of course. It's gonna look amazing once it's done. I knew before I made this cake that it was gonna look really cool. Um, I had spent a lot of time kind of brainstorming how it would come together, and uh, I was just so excited to, you know, get working on it. All right, I got one more spot up here. I don't wanna forget this one. So the reason that I covered my cake with dark green fondant before adding all of these pieces was just because I knew I would be doing this green dusting and if there were any spaces between these sections uh, it wouldn't be as noticeable because it was green on the underside anyway. So now what I'm going to do is just switch back to my light green and if there are any areas that just look too solid yellow I'm just going to hit them with a little bit of this light green. So uh, don't forget guys too that you know I'm always looking for new things to be inspired by or new projects to create and uh, obviously I want to create cakes that people want to see so if you have an idea for a cake whether it's like a summer themed cake or a gigantic food cake or I don't know another huge tropical fruit. Let me know in the comments below what you guys would like to see and maybe you'll see us create it. All right, so I think that's good with the dusting. Really quick, I just wanna go in with some ivory food color. This is just liquid food gel. Same stuff you would use to color your buttercream. And just really randomly, I'm just going to go in with a really fine paintbrush. Maybe I'll darken some of the spikes Go there towards the top. So I like to use ivory for something like this because it's kind of a, a really light mixture between like a coffee brown and like a golden yellow. Um, you have to be careful with brown food color sometimes because it often has a lot of like red undertones, um, but ivory doesn't have that. So ivory adds a nice like organic brown color to most food cakes whenever, whenever you're working on them. I think that looks good there. Cool. Ta-da, and we're done. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, so next here, I'm just gonna get rid of this color so I don't smudge anything. Move my cornstarch over and I'll just move this over to the side. So, I wanted the leaves on this cake to look really realistic. So I didn't want to use gum paste or fondant or anything. I decided to just use wafer paper. Um, and I made all my leaves white and then I airbrushed them after they were put together. So oftentimes we'll use wire, uh, like floral wire, between wafer paper or gum paste so that we can attach whatever we're making to our cake. But I wanted this to be super food safe so I just used pasta, like spaghetti, fettuccine, whatever works. So wafer paper has a smooth side and a textured side. So what I wanna do is mist the textured side with a little bit of vodka 
and I'm using vodka because it dries so quickly and it's not going to cause the wafer paper to dissolve. Um, but just that little bit of moisture is enough to make these two pieces of paper stick together. And now that I have this pasta sandwiched between the paper, um, it automatically is just gonna, you know, be able to support itself inside the cake. So I'll let that dry for a moment and then I'll shape it. I'll show you again what I did. I'll take my wafer paper, textured side facing me. I'll mist my pasta just a little bit. It's not salted water, it's vodka. <laughs> Any kind of work doesn't have to be uh, great vodka. In the past, I've also used um, orange liqueur. Any clear food grade alcohol really works. So I'll just press this together. If you miss the wafer paper too much with the alcohol, sometimes it starts to kind of ruffle up. That's okay. Um, obviously, pineapple leaves aren't perfectly smooth anyway, right? They always have that organic look to them. And then once these dry for, you know, 30 seconds, a minute, what I'm gonna do is grab a sharp craft knife and just cut it into a leaf shape. So I'll leave the bottom part wide. Obviously that's where it's gonna go towards, connect, uh, connect towards the cake. Awesome. And then I have a leaf. So all I have to do here is just airbrush it green and it's ready for my pineapple cake. So I also notice the pineapples are always kinda pointy at the top, or the, the leaves are always pointy. So to be able to shape this wafer paper, I just miss my fingers with a little bit of this vodka. That just makes this paper malleable enough so I can kinda pinch it together and it won't crack. So that is how I made all of these leaves. I think I made about 45. And then I airbrushed them green and I brushed the back of them with a little bit of white food coloring. Um, and then they had to dry for a good bit of time. Um, so the next part of course is to add them to the cake. So I made all different sizes. And what I wanna do is start right towards the center and I'll start with my four largest. So I want these to have their points facing out, just like that. Make sure I'm grabbing all the same size. And I'm just gonna gently push them in. This whole pasta thing usually works. Sometimes if the cake is too hard, um, the pasta could break. So I wanna try and be pretty careful as I'm doing this. Trying to keep the bed parts of the leaves facing out. Cool. So now I have some smaller ones. I'll go in with my smaller ones. I'll uh, put one straight down the center. Good. And then I'm just going to try and cover up the gaps in between all the other pieces. So if you guys are just joining, I'm uh, inserting, <laughs> that sounded fun, I'm inserting all of these wafer paper leaves into my pineapple. Um, I started with some slightly larger ones, and these ones are just a little bit shorter, just so the size, oops, pasta broke. Just so the size sort of uh, kind of gradates down as all these leaves move on here. What are the sizes that you used? Uh, I started with a full length of wafer paper, which was about, I think it's about, uh, it's normal paper size, so 8 inches by 11, so these top ones are about 11 inches long, um, and then I just made each one an inch shorter as I went along. It's all about the measurements. So I'm just going to keep going all the way around, just inserting these, I want this to look nice and full. And the other thing I want to be mindful of too is as I get towards the bottom or I get to my shorter leaves, I want to kind of have the leaves pointing out towards me. Pushing this straight down. 
So if you guys have an idea for a uh, gigantic food cake, um, let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. Last week I made a huge fried egg, which before this was probably my favorite uh, recent cake. So if you haven't seen my gigantic fried egg cake uh, from last week's Food Network Live, check it out on the Food Network page or on my page, Baked by Dan, on Facebook. It will uh, definitely amaze you. Cool, I'm gonna keep going around. Oops. If one breaks, that's why I made extras, right? You always have to plan with some extras. All right. So I'm getting towards the bottom, I'm using my shorter ones. If I see any like big gaps, I'll just try and fill them in with some of my leftover shorter leaves. So guys, don't forget, if you're looking for cake recipes that you can sculpt and stack and carve to make something like this, um, you're definitely going to want to check out my blog, which is Baking with Dan. Um, or if you are subscribed to me on Facebook, you'll see the uh, recipes or the videos that I often post there. Let's see, so I'm getting to my outer edge here. Pretty cool. So my final couple rows, I actually don't have on any pasta. They are just on, uh, well, they're, they're not on anything actually. They're just going to um, stick to the fondant because the fondant's a little sticky uh, because it's so hot. So let's see, so I ran out of some of my really short ones. So I'll just cut an extra long one, no big deal. Do that again. So wafer paper is one of my favorite mediums whenever I'm looking to add really delicate realism to a cake because it literally is paper. It's made out of potato starch and water and vegetable oil so it's totally edible um, and it's really light. So you can buy wafer paper online, you can buy it at cake decorating stores, it's super easy to find. Alright, so let's go in with this final row. Then I'm going to hit this thing with a little bit of airbrush and it'll be ready to go. Okay, so I have some loose leaves that I'll kind of tuck in wherever I need some, some uh, spaces filled in. These I made in the same way with the coloring and the airbrushing, I just didn't attach them to any pasta. So because it's a little uh, sticky, or the air is a little humid, I should say, um, it should just kind of stick in place, hopefully. If not, a little bit of vodka sprayed right on the bottom should do the trick. <laughs> or it'll fall off anyway. Uh, just kidding. So my final little layer around is just going to be some of these little short guys. Let's see, Hold one right here. I think it's looking pretty good. I think it looks pretty full. I don't think it needs too many more. I'm ready to get my airbrush out. Well, let me hit the airbrush. So if you guys uh, just tuned in and you didn't get to see how I created all of this texture and all of this um, you know, realistic pineapple like coloring, don't worry, once this video is done it'll be live on the Food Network Facebook page and I'm going to share it on my own Facebook and you can watch the whole thing and if you guys attempt this cake, I would love to see it. So share it on my Facebook page because if you create a giant pineapple, I want to see how it turns out. So I'm going to plug my airbrush in. Fill my airbrush with a little bit of yellow. Yellow airbrush color, that is. And I just want to airbrush towards the 
center. This one's falling off a little bit. Towards the center of some of these. I want this to be a little bit more yellow at the top. So I'm going to try and keep most of my airbrushing towards the top. So if anybody's wondering what uh, airbrush color is, it's basically just thinned down food gel. Same stuff you would use to color buttercream. like a light coffee brown and then just give this a once over and we'll be good to go the ivory really brings all the other colors together so it's going to blend together that green and that yellow really nicely There we go. I think we're good to go. I can turn this airbrush off. So that is my version of a larger than life pineapple. The perfect cake for a luau, a barbecue, any summer party, or any time of year when you're craving a pineapple. Uh, if you didn't get to see how I textured this or how I made the leaves, share this video. You can watch it once it ends. Um, but now I'm gonna cut the cake up because that's the best part. So let's see. What looks like a good side to cut? Yeah. So cut right here. <laughs> now you're saying that's not a good side. Let's just get one more quick look at it. Right here? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go straight in with my knife. clean this off a little bit. Guys, don't forget if you have any questions about this process or baking cakes or sculpting cakes or anything like that, um, I wasn't able to see the comments during this broadcast, but I'll uh, do my best to answer any questions. I'll try and go back after this video and see if I can get to any of your questions. I've got a spatula here so I can try and get this out. It's really cake. I wasn't lying to you. <laughs> so I went with a yellow butter cake for this one and I colored it with just a little bit of golden yellow food color just to uh, go along with the fact that it's a pineapple when you cut it open. It's actually yellow on the inside. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. Like I said, this is like my new favorite cake. I'm just so happy with how it turned out. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to me on Facebook, Baking with Dan on Facebook. Check out my Instagram, check out my YouTube. And uh, if you have any ideas for what you'd like to see next time, let me know. Everybody have an awesome weekend. Take care.